So as most of you know, React Navigation is the de facto way of adding navigation to your React Native app. Initially, it started out as an Expo and Facebook collaboration, but now it's maintained and driven by the Expo team. And they've put in a considerable amount of effort to make this an extremely stable library. And as a longtime supporter of Expo, I'm proud to let you know that this video is sponsored by the Expo team. Expo is probably the fastest way to build your apps with React Native. It can manage your native code so that you can just write JavaScript. Not only can it help you build your app binary and submit it to the store, it can also take care of creating and storing your key stores and other app signing credentials for you. Once you've published your app to the App Store, you can use over-the-air JavaScript updates to make changes to your app without having to resubmit your app to the store. There's a lot more you can do with Expo tools, like use the Expo client, to share your app with teammates without having to go through test flight or play store beta. You can also use the entire set of Expo libraries called the Expo SDK in any existing React Native app. So if you want to manage your native code, that shouldn't be a problem. Follow the link in the description to learn more and try it out. The library by default includes support for your common navigation patterns, starting with the Stack Navigator, which allows you to transition between two screens by pushing one screen on top of the other. The other type of navigator is the draw navigator, which enables you to slide in a screen from the left or the right in the form of a draw. And lastly, the tab navigator, with which you can add tabs to your app, either to the bottom or to the top of your app. In today's video, we're going to be covering a specific navigator, which is not often covered. This particular navigator is the create native stack navigator. So the first question that comes up is why do we need another stack navigator when we already have a create stack navigator given to us? So though the create stack navigator tries to mimic the look and feel of the native navigators on the specific platforms, it is JavaScript based and it does lose out on some of the native look and feel. The create native stack navigator aims to solve that particular problem. This navigator relies on the native APIs of the UI navigation controller on iOS and the fragment on Android to make your navigator behave exactly the same and have the same performance as your native applications. One of the common examples of the native navigator on iOS is the one where you get to have a large header on certain screens. So as you can see here, we're using the create native stack navigator to mimic that behavior. We see the settings screen slide in with the header increasing in size and it is highly performant. So as always, to start with, we have an empty React Native project that I've created with Expo and I'm running it on an iPhone 11 simulator. We'll start by installing the dependencies. Let's head over to the Get Started section of React Navigation and here we'll use Yarn to install the React Navigation library. I'll open up the terminal in Visual Studio Code and paste that in. Once we have that installed, We'll head back to the documentation and we'll get the rest of the dependencies. So I'm just going to click copy here and paste that in. As you can see, it requires no additional setup to use the create native stack navigator. Once that's done, let's close that out. Head back to our app.js and we need to import something known as enable screens from react native screens. So let's do that here on top. We'll say enable screens from react native screens. React Native Screens is what this particular navigator depends on to give us that native feel. And here on top, we can just call Enable Screens. Now it's time to create our navigator. So here we'll import in the navigation container from at React Navigation forward slash native. Next, we'll go ahead and import our create native stack navigator. But we have to make sure that we import it in from React Native Screens forward slash native stack. Let's save that. And now let's set up our navigator. We're going to just get rid of this view here. And instead, we're going to pass in our navigation container. We'll first have to set up our navigator. So we'll say const stack is equal to create native stack navigator. And then we can pass in our stack navigator by saying stack dot navigator. Just like we do with create stack navigator. And inside this, we need to pass in our screens. So I'm just going to create two screens by saying stack.screen. The first screen is going to be the home screen and the component will point to is the home component. I'll just duplicate that and name the second one settings. Let's open up our sidebar. Let's create a new folder 
call that app and inside that let's create a new folder and call that screens then we'll create our two files which is home.js and we have settings.js here i'm just going to use my custom snippet to create a functional component change the component name to settings and similarly for home i'm going to call that home back to our app.js and here on top we'll import in home from app forward slash screens forward slash home and similarly we'll import in settings let's save that and let's reload the app and there we see we have our home screen let's start with the first use case that we spoke about which was the larger header so configuring the create native stack navigator is similar to the way we would configure a normal navigator and that is by using the options prop so heading over to the stack screen we can pass in options and inside that we can use header large title and set that to true and let's create a button to navigate from the home to the settings screen so i'm going to jump over to the home screen get rid of this text and i'm just going to pass in a button here give it a title of settings and pass in an on press within which we'll use navigation dot navigate and pass in the name of the settings screen which in our case is settings we obviously need to get access to the navigation prop and we can do that by pulling it in here. Let's save that. Click on settings. And as we see, we go to the settings screen and without any additional configuration, we have this native large header. If we test out our app on Android, we can notice that the header here is similar to the native Android header with the title towards the left. Secondly, if we go to the settings screen, we see a normal header and not an enlarged header like it is on iOS. So here we're not only maintaining the native look and feel, but also the performance of the native devices. Another common thing that we can do with this header large title is make it auto collapse as we scroll up. For that, we can get rid of the text from here and instead pass in a scroll view. Set the style of the scroll view to a flex of one so that it takes up the complete space that's available here. And then we can just get rid of these styles here that align the items to the center. If we save that, and now if we scroll up, we notice that the header collapses nicely and if we scroll back down, we see the header enlarging. So the header large title is not the only configuration that's available. If we head over to the documentation for the create native stack navigator, at the bottom you have a link to the complete API reference. As you can see, it points to the React Native Screens GitHub repository because that's what this particular navigator depends on. Here if you have a look, there are several other options available to configure your navigator. We'll just go over another few, especially the animations. So if you come down here, you have something known as stack animation and you also have stack presentations. Stack animation basically decides how the screen should appear or disappear when it is presented. So by default, it's going to use the platform default animation. If you set that to fade, you'll notice that the screen fades in or fades out when it's presented. If you use flip, you'll have to set the stack presentation to modal and instead of the model vertically coming in, you'll see it flip. But as you can see, it works on iOS only. And obviously, if you set it to none, you will get no animation. Stack presentation, on the other hand, works on how the stack is presented. You can either push one screen on top of the other, which by default on iOS is a slide in from the right. The important thing to note here is that the animation on Android is going to vary depending on the OS version and theme. Apart from push, we have a couple of modal animations and one particular form sheet animation which is specific to iOS. You will notice that a lot of these modal animations do not work on Android as they may not be natively supported on the platform. So don't be surprised if these animations are not identical on Android and iOS as they'll try and use the native animations. So let's go ahead and try a few of these animations out. In app.js, let's apply the animation to the complete navigator. To do that, we'll use screen options. Inside this, pass in stack animation, and the animation we want is fade. Let's save that. Now, as you can see, the screen nicely fades in. In order to use the flip animation, we can change this to flip, and we have to change the stack presentation and make that a modal. Now if we test this out, you see that the screen nicely flips in and we can swipe it out. We can also just get rid of this flip and save that out. 
and then we'll get a nice model that shows up and we can swipe it out. Another common configuration option is for the header title. Though you may want the native look and feel, you might still want to position the header title in some other position. For that, you can use the header center prop, pass that into your screen or stack navigator by saying options, header center, and then you can pass in your custom component which will be positioned to the center. So let's just pass in a text saying home. And as you can see, it's moved to the center. So we've talked about why we should be using the native stack navigator. When you want the native look and feel and native performance of the respective platforms, your go-to navigator must be the native stack navigator. But now let's talk about a few reasons why you would not want to use the native stack navigator. The very first reason would be when you want to use gestures in your app. With the native stack navigator, gestures are only going to be available on iOS as natively Android does not have any gestures enabled. Whereas in the create stack navigator, you can easily add gestures to both your navigators. The way we would add gestures to our stack navigator would be by using this gestures enabled prop. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So here in app.js, let's first open up the terminal and install our stack navigator. So we'll say yarn add at react dash navigation forward slash stack. Once we have that installed, right below our create native stack navigator import, we'll import in our create stack navigator. But this time we'll import it in from at react navigation forward slash stack. Then here where we were creating our stack, we'll comment that out and instead we'll say const stack is equal to create stack navigator. If we just save that, and let's just refresh our app. We would see everything still works. And now we have access to our stack navigator. And if we swipe back, you'll notice that the gestures work by default on iOS. Whereas if we test it out on Android, our navigator works, but we don't get any swipe gestures as of now. We need to go into our screen options. Here we can just comment out stack animation and stack presentation. And then we can set gesture enabled to true. Now if we swipe down, you can see the gestures work. You also have other options for gesture direction. So in our case, in case we wanted the gesture direction to be horizontal, you can set that to horizontal and instead of swiping down, we could have swiped horizontally and the page would come down. I'm just going to comment that out. Apart from gestures, another thing missing in the create native stack navigator are the highly customizable animations. If you head back to the documentation and let's jump to the animation section. We've already spoken about the gesture direction, but as we come down, we'll see that we have a lot of options that are available in the create stack navigator. We have something known as transition spec within which you can set up your custom animation for the appear and disappear animation. And it can use either a timing or a spring animation. So let's see how we can do that. I'm just going to copy this default config from here. Let's get both our emulators here. And on top here, I'm just going to paste in the config. And let's just change this up a little bit by setting the damping to 50 and set overshoot clamping to false. Then down here, let's pass in our transition spec. We have to pass in the open config for which we'll pass in config. And for close, let's pass in config as well. I'm just gonna make that slightly bigger. Now if you click on settings, you see we get that nice spring animation. Similarly on Android, you'll notice we get the animation but it's not clearly visible because our animation is vertical and we'll just come to that shortly. We can also modify one of the animations by creating a new animation ourselves. We can say const close config, set the animation to a timing animation, set up the config of the animation by giving it a duration of say 1000 and set an easing to easing.linear. Make sure to import an easing here from React Native and let's save that out. Here for the close config, let's pass in close config. Now when we click on settings, we get that spring animation. But when we go back, we see we get a timing animation. Same thing here on Android. So though there are a lot of options to customize and create your own animations, like you can see here, we created the transition spec. Similarly, we have a card style interpolator, which is how the particular view is animated. We also have the header style interpolator to animate the header. But what's cool is 
that you have this set of pre-made configs that are available to you. You have a transition spec which takes care of the complete animation of the stack and you also have card style interpolators preset for you which handle the animation of a particular view. So let's go ahead and give these a try. So you've seen that both the animations on Android and iOS are different as of now. Android has this vertical animation, whereas iOS has this horizontal animation. Let's go ahead and set the same animation on both. Here on top, we're importing in our create stack navigator. Let's go ahead and import in transition presets and card style interpolators. Next, we can come down here. Let's just comment out our transition spec and instead pass in card style interpolator. Set that to card style interpolators. And as you can see, we have a lot of options here. We'll use for horizontal iOS. Let's save that. Obviously on iOS, everything works the same, but on Android, now you notice that we get that horizontal animation. What we can also do is we can go ahead and overwrite this interpolator using our custom transition spec. Now, if we save that, now you notice that our back animation is our slow animation that we had set up using the timing function and our open animation is that spring animation. Similarly on iOS. So our card style interpolator is taking care of the animation of only the particular card. If we want to use a complete animation for the complete stack, for that, let's go ahead and use our transition presets. For that, we can just pass in our transition preset by using the spread operator. And then inside that, we can select one particular preset. Let's select modal slide from bottom iOS and save that out. For iOS, we also need to set the prop mode equal to modal here. Let's save that. Reload the app. Now, as you can see, we get the nice modal slide from bottom. And similarly on Android as well, we get the same experience. So now that we've spoken about both the Create Stack Navigator and the Create Native Stack Navigator, it's time to see which navigator to use for your next React Native project. My recommendation to you would be to start with the Create Native Stack Navigator so that you can get the native look and performance of the individual platform. Work with the customizations that are available and only when you're limited by the customizations should you move to the Create Stack Navigator. Lastly, if you're looking for that large header animation that is specific to iOS, I recommend you should be using the Create Native Stack Navigator. When you feel that you need further custom animations, you will have to jump over to the Create Stack Navigator. Also, if you want gestures on both your iOS and Android applications, this would be your go-to navigator. Lastly, you might want identical navigators on both iOS and Android, and in that case, I'd suggest to start off with the Create Stack Navigator itself. Yeah.